Look what just arrived. It's a carbon chameleon frame. I'm excited to build this up and take a first look at it today. When I was in college, my buddy had a chameleon and we rode that thing everywhere and had a blast on it. So a few years ago I used to have one and it had a lot of fun on it. It was the aluminum one and now I'm curious how the carbon frame feels compared to the aluminum frame. Because that aluminum frame is surprisingly soft feeling. It does not beat you up, which is uncharacteristic of aluminum. And I want to see if this carbon frame is uncharacteristic of carbon and see if it is even softer than the aluminum frame or maybe a little bit stiffer. Let's find out. Holy cow, that is light. That's beautiful. It's still got the little chameleon looking uh, logo there. The carbon doesn't have like a checkered weave. It just has kind of those little lines in it. It looks 3D. Threaded bottom bracket. That is awesome. This looks good. I actually dig the color more than it looks in the pictures. This green looks pretty good. Probably heavier than the DV9. My guess is 3.8 pounds. All right, that was pretty close. 3.87 pounds for a size medium. This has integrated headset cups, which is weird. It means the bearings just sit in the carbon like this. The metal bearing sits on the carbon. There's no cups to press in which also means you cannot run an angle set with this. So we're stuck with the 67.5 degree head angle that this has. Man, if this thing was 66 or 65, it'd probably be my all time favorite bike if it rides like the aluminum one. I love the rear end on this. Before I build it up, let's take some closer looks. Up here is the integrated headset, the carbon fiber is actually the size of the bearing and the bearing sits directly on the carbon fiber. There are no metal cups that it goes into. It sits directly on the frame. So we hope that never gets ovalized or wallowed out because there's no fix for it at that point. That's a little bit freaky, but it is what it is. Also, the cable ports are just holes. There's no guides in there. There's no tubes in there. So they provide you with this foam that you wrap around your cables so when it bounces around in there, you don't hear it. It deadens the sound. And for some companies, that's to be expected, but I expect more from Santa Cruz. On their full suspension carbon frames, they have a tube that runs the whole way, which makes it real easy to fish and it makes it completely silent and they've mastered that. So I'm curious why they wouldn't do it on this as well. This is uncharacteristic of Santa Cruz. Also, the front triangle is completely internal and everything exits the port here. And then it goes to external. On an aluminum frame, that makes sense because these tubes run into the seat tube and you can't pass a, a cable through there because the, the seat tube terminates it. But with carbon, this is all completely hollow and it would be super easy to just run a cable along there and have it pop out here. So if you're gonna do internal on a carbon frame, go completely internal until the end. That just, I don't quite understand why they did it halfway. One thing they did a lot better than the aluminum version, the aluminum version has an exit port here and an exit port here, once again, because the tubes terminate. But because this is carbon and this is all hollow, I can run my dropper cable in here and straight up there. So I'll never see it out here. That's nice for frame bags. That's nice for water bottle mounts. It's nice when I adjust the seat height that I don't have to push it through a tight bend there. It will still be a tight bend, but it won't be external at all. And here's the little port to fish that through. That's why we have a hole right there. I like how much material there is down here. This should be a very stiff and efficient peddler. I really like that. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna ride stiff. It just means when you put power down, the bottom bracket, when you're really cranking on it, is not gonna be flexy, hopefully. We'll see. And then hopefully they built some compliance into these seat stays so that it is as soft as the aluminum one or softer. We got a little nick in this. And that's to be expected for review bikes. Sometimes we get the blems. We've got the 29er dropouts here. You can buy separate dropouts for 29 versus 27.5 plus. This lowers the bottom bracket ever so slightly. So when you're running 29, it's not riding super high. So when I run 27.5 plus on this, the bottom bracket will be lower than normal. 
I'm okay with that. I'm used to it. I'm not gonna bash my pedals. It shouldn't be a problem. Cool dropout system. I like it. So you can slide these in and out from 415 to 430. You can run them single speed. You can adjust the dropouts for what you like. I like it slammed all the way forward. I like that we have ISCG tabs built into this for either a chain guide or a bash guard. I'm gonna be running a bash guard because I don't wanna ever hit that carbon down tube. It's a sexy bike, there's no doubt about it. It is beautiful. But it's a little disappointing that it's not quite as modern and advanced as their full suspension bikes. For some reason, they cut a couple corners on this one. All right, it's a little bit embarrassing, but I don't have enough parts to truly build this up the way I wish I did. So, I'm gonna build it up with parts from some of my other bikes here. It's still gonna function totally fine, but it's not gonna be as bling as I'd like. It's so weird putting a headset right into here with no cups. And I wish I had like nine crank sets and nine hammer bars and nine droppers, but I don't at the moment. So we gotta kinda borrow parts from one bike for another. Don't tell me there's another. God, we've got three bottom bracket standards. This build is just not wanting to happen tonight. That is awful. So this doesn't fit. I'm upset with SRAM for this one. Another stupid standard. Yeah, it's got its own stupid standard and I don't have the tool for that. So bottom bracket's not happening. And I don't think this is the right upper bearing spacer. So this build's gonna be put on hold for a little while. Man, that's disappointing. Why SRAM, why would you do that? Why would you not just use a common bottom bracket size? Oh, this is frustrating. Every aspect of this build is turning out to be a pain when I steal parts from another bike. Today's one of those days when I wish the bike industry had standards. Where we use the same headset bearings, where we use the same bottom bracket, at least tool size, like to have a separate thing for that is ridiculous. And brakes, I can't just throw on because I have to disconnect some brakes, drain all the fluid, fish them through, hook it up, and then re-bleed it. Every single aspect of this is proving to be a pain. I'm digging deep in the parts drawer to build this. I want to get this rideable tomorrow. I don't know if that's going to happen. We'll see. I'm kind of disappointed in this dub bottom bracket requiring a special tool. Uh, it's so frustrating having to have all the tools. There's like six different bottom bracket tools you need. We're gonna run some dub cranks I've got. Not my first choice, but not awful. All right, cranks are on. Let's put the fork on. All right, I've got a few spare headsets, but they're all a little bit different from what this needs. This needs a different cap on top that covers all this. So I've been wanting to go single speed for a long time and I think it's time. This seems to be the perfect single speed bike. I've owned a Chameleon that was geared before and I know what the aluminum one feels like. I'm curious what the carbon one feels like. So that's my main purpose of this test. But I wanna do something different. I wanna try single speed and I have a buddy who is, I don't wanna say a bad influence on me, but he's an influence on me, my buddy Cody. And he is a single speed beast. And he's trying to get me hooked and I'm a little bit scared because I think I'm going to be hooked. And going single speed is kinda of like going vegan. You, <laughs> Once you're single speed, you kinda of preach to the whole world about how they're doing it wrong and you need to try it. So I'm gonna try not to be an obnoxious single speeder. Cody's not obnoxious but I'm worried that I'm going down a dark path and I'm gonna get sucked into it. I'm never gonna want gears again. And that's okay, this is gonna be fun. I've never owned a single speed and I've never truly ridden one more than a couple miles. So this is gonna be a fun experiment and I'm learning a lot about single speed life. First of all, it works best on an HG driver. I've only seen one option that works on an XD driver and all my wheels are XD except for these night. And these are super light wheels and I think they're gonna match the feel of a single speed bike perfectly. We got the big plus tires to take the bumps out. They're super light. This should be pretty fun. 
I got a $10 eight speed chain PC830. And the idea behind this, I should still be able to run it on a narrow wide chain ring, but it's an eight speed chain. So right now what I'm doing is marking where the chain line needs to be so I can put my cogs on the right spot. And I want this in a pretty straight line, in a perfectly straight line. That looks pretty good. I'll fine tune it in a bit. But that's one cool thing about this bike with the sliding dropouts. I don't need a chain tensioner. Now they also sell dropouts specifically for single speed, but I have boost wheels. I don't have 142 non-boost wheels, so I'm gonna use the boost for this. I think it's gonna work perfectly. Well, nothing's been working perfectly on this build, so I can't say that. I think it's gonna work well. And I gotta give a shout out to my buddy Cody. I don't do drugs, but I do bicycles and they're more expensive. <laughs> they say if you get your kids hooked on bikes, they'll never have money for drugs. And uh, there's some truth to that. So he's loaning me some parts to get this set up to decide the gearing I want. This is a 30 tooth front. I'd like a 32 because that's what most single speeds are running and I just kind of want to stick with the standard, but I'll make this work. I've got a 19 in here and a 20. It's my first time single speeding, so I'm gonna go with a 19. I think it'll work okay with the 30 tooth. It might be a little bit too easy. We'll see what it's like in Sedona's trails. So big thanks, Cody, for lending me these parts so I can experiment without having to buy a whole bunch of sets. Everybody needs a friend like Cody in their life. I'm curious if you guys have ever single speeded. If so, for how long and why did you stop? Or are you still doing it? And what do you love most about single speed? I'm excited to have a simpler machine and I can't afford another shifter and derailleur right now anyway. So that makes life real easy. I don't know, I hope it doesn't destroy my knees. If you saw my video where I rode the Black Canyon Trail in a day and I kept saying, I wanna come back on a single speed, it might be really stupid, but I, I still want to do that. I've marked where I want this to lie right about there, and I need to put the spacers in the right place so that that lines up perfectly. Man, that's a light wheel, so light. This is crazy, I'm gonna lose the weight of a cassette too, which is pretty significant. I've got one ride on this free hub body and it's already chewed up, that's so sad. All right, that's about as simple as it gets. I already like it for its simplicity, that's pretty awesome. I love that the chain was $10, that's pretty sweet. Sorry, I wish I had all these beautiful parts to put into here, but this is kind of what hardtails are often about, especially when you buy them as a frame. You swap parts over that you have from an old bike or from spares, and you learn, ah, oh, shoot, that doesn't fit. I gotta get this, and I gotta get that, and it ends up nickeling and diming you. Post up if you've had a similar experience before. I mean, I love building frames with perfect parts, but that doesn't always happen. I like that these dropouts actually move it. They don't just loosen it and you have to bang on it. Like when you screw them in or out, it actually moves the wheel. I don't know if that makes sense. That's rubbing the chain guard. I guess you can't run a 30 tooth with this. All right, that's pretty dang simple. I like simple. Man, that's close. Let me show you how close that is. Uh, it doesn't get any closer than that. In fact, I think it is rubbing the chain stay protector a little bit. This is frustrating. There's no reason on an $1,800 frame that can be set up single speed that they advertise it that way. It should not come in contact with the chain stay like that. I just, in doing some research to see if I'm the only one, Bike Radar just built one up single speed as well and they have the same problem. They say it hasn't touched the carbon yet, but it's awfully close and they weren't as bugged as I am, but I think that's unacceptable on an $1,800 frame. All right, I'm extremely frustrated right now. I'm doing the internal brake housing, which is stupid because it's only part way and Here's the problem. These little ports that you pass it through, they don't fit 
the barbs, the olives. So I have to completely remove the olive as well to thread the to thread the cables and then reinstall the olive and then I am it's just so dumb. This has been super frustrating. I hate internal brake routing. I know a lot of you don't and you're going to call me a whiner. I don't care. This is a pain in the butt. I've been spending the last 40 minutes on this trying to get this through. And I'm frustrated. Extremely frustrated. Well, I'm pretty frustrated right now and it doesn't do any good to work on a bike when you're frustrated. Finally got the housing routed. I had to cut a barb off, an olive off, and put a new one on. The angle of these brakes, it even exits okay, but where the cable tie is, it's, it's got to make such an abrupt shift right there that the cable doesn't even line up. I'm frustrated. It's been a long night, and you know what? I'm going to put this away for a while. I'd love to get this out riding tomorrow, but it needs a special headset. It needs brake crap done. I'm still worried about that rubbing the chain stay. And to be frank, I am a little bit bugged with this bike. We all have those days where stuff just is not clicking and this bike has fought me every inch of the way. And I'm, I have a bad attitude about it right now and I'm not excited about this. I was stoked this morning. I was thinking I'd have a single speed to start riding tonight. It's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna end this video here and I don't know when we're gonna see the Carbon Chameleon again. This is pretty frustrating. I want to make this bike work, but if it costs me a $50 headset and then another brake set and then I have to buy another chain ring and hope that a 32 clears this and it's just, it's very frustrating. I just need to chill out, walk away from the project and come back later with a fresh mind. Thanks for watching. Sorry this is such a depressing uh, video. Believe me, no one's more bummed that this didn't work out than me. I would love to have this ready to ride tomorrow. I had a, a perfect ride planned for this with my buddy Cody so we could single speed together and it's just not going to happen. There's too much to do and I don't have time to be fighting all this right now. So this is going to go back on the shelf and who knows when we'll see it next. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.